Welcome to the Startup Pregnant Podcast, where we talk to creative leaders about what it means to be an entrepreneur and a parent. I'm your host, Sarah K. Peck. Hey, everyone. I wanted to tell you about a contest we are running at Startup Pregnant. So we are doing a series, this 10 Core Values series. And for each mini episode, every day over the next two weeks, we are having a contest where you can win lots of amazing prizes. The prizes include one-on-one coaching to business books by amazing women authors to more. There's lots of fabulous goodies. The way you play is like this. At the end of each of these episodes, there is a reflection question for you to think about. So listen to the 10 minute episode and then answer the question. Go pop over to our blog at startuppregnant.com and write your answer to the question. And every time you post a comment, you get another chance to win. So the contest is open November 13th through November 30th, 2017. So I hope you enjoy, take a listen to this episode and then go leave a comment on our blog to play in the contest. This is the fifth episode in our series, the 10 by 10 of the Startup Pregnant Core Values. Each episode, we're taking 10 minutes to talk about our 10 core values and the philosophy behind Startup Pregnant. Today, I want to talk about number five. And it is one of those paradoxes that is frustrating and helpful, difficult, yet such a good reminder. And number five goes like this. Plans are important, and things rarely go according to plan. A wise doula once told me that in preparing for birth, she encourages women to consider the range of birth experiences and possibilities. So when we come up with a plan and we visualize, if that's something that you do, you visualize your perfect birth scenario or even start to examine your expectations, what it is that you want, what it is that you think is going to happen. Sometimes for the type A's among us, I will include myself in that group, it can be easy to start to create a plan that looks very much like an exact set of instructions. First, this will happen, then this will happen, we'll be in labor for this many hours, I'll go to the hospital, then I'll do this, then I'll do that. And it can become a very articulated list of exactly what you think will happen. And the doula that I worked with was very helpful in saying, well, let's come up with a list of birth preferences rather than a specific birth plan. And what this did was it allowed me to consider the range of possibilities. Well, okay, hypothetically, in this situation, what would you choose or what would you prefer? Having this set of preferences instead of a capital P plan allowed me to be able to plan for something that was effectively not plannable. And when we step back and we think about it, babies are ultimately the biggest plan changer that we can have. Inviting a human into your life is like inviting chaos in. Babies have their own ideas, and what happens is often very different than the way we planned or expected. And so this is where the paradox lies. Should we forego making plans at all? Because if nothing's going to go according to plan, then why have a plan in the first place? And at Startup Pregnant, this philosophy is that In life, making plans, in life and in business, making plans is great. We love plans and goals and ideas and visions. And having a plan for the future and having an idea about where you want to go can really be a powerful tool. It can equip you with the ideas for where you're going and the framework to operate within and the path forward for the next few months to a year. But we also know that more often than not, things don't always go according to plan. And that's where life gets really interesting. Because honestly, if things went exactly according to the plans we created, what would be the point in living them forward? In some senses, we would be bored out of our minds because we would plan it and then it would happen and that would be that. So instead, we act in the present with the information that we have. And we need to stay resilient and agile. And understand that this whole process, this messy process where things are constantly changing is just as important as the outcome. In a previous show, Aaron Boyle talked about how having kids is about inviting chaos into your life. And in trying to design and strive for a simple life, she wasn't ever going to be happy trying to make the entire dang thing perfect and simple. But she could find joy in the simple moments in the five minutes in the morning, in the two minutes in the middle of the day, in the snuggles in the story time at night, 
and in the sweet little moments that punctuate different days. I think that the ability to show up and be mis- messy right inside of it all, even as things are changing, is a skill that we can all cultivate and value. So then how does this apply to business, for example? I think that what we've heard from our early interviews and in many of the interviews that are coming down the line is that there's no perfect time to start a business. There's no perfect set of circumstances. In a lot of cases, when we're interviewing different people, we find that it was actually the fact that nothing went according to plan or the idea that so many things started to happen all at once that propelled them into business. For some women, it was losing a job or needing extra income or even the separation from a partner. Something suddenly changed. Nothing was going according to plan. And they ended up starting a business. Sometimes it's thinking that a job is going to be the answer and realizing that when you're in the job, it's not what you expected or that they don't have the same vision that you have. And despite all your attempts otherwise, you realize that in order to make true what you believe, you have to step out and try it on your own. There's no right or perfect time to start a business and there's no right or perfect time to have a kid. My family always jokes that especially for me, because I do identify on the pattern mapping type A side of the spectrum. They said for me, my father would say, Sarah, if you wait until you're ready, you'll always be waiting. And to me, that was so important because I couldn't quite ever line everything up perfectly and make sure the plan was ready in order to start acting. Often, it was the reverse that was true. I had to take that step forward and then kind of figure it out as I was going and then take the next step forward and figure it out a little bit more. And God, I wished for a plan. I wish there was just a set of instructions, but it was more about figuring it out as we went and looking at the plan I had from a year ago and saying, oh, interesting. That's what my past self thought about this. Wild. There's so much more now that I know. And Joseph Campbell has a quote about this that I really like. He says, if you can see your path laid out in front of you step by step, then you know it's not your path. Your own path you make with every step you take. That's why it's your path. I love this idea and I hate it. It's like, well, why can't I just have the path in front of me? Why can't it just work out? And the idea that we have to take the steps forward and carve out the path as part of the process of growing our own path is something that's also reassuring and deeply relieving to me when I feel on those days, like I do a lot of times, that I don't exactly know where I'm going. And at Startup Pregnant, this philosophy that that we make plans, we make the best the best decisions given the information that's at hand. And then we know that things won't necessarily go according to plan. Sometimes they'll go better than our wildest dreams. Other times they'll go completely sideways. But this idea is almost the core of it all, right? This is, this is fundamental to motherhood and to parenting and to entrepreneurship. We love plans. We love goals. We love big dreams. We love visions. We love this idea that we want to make new things happen in the world. And we know that plans only take us so far, that birth plans or birth preferences, that child raising, that startups, that teams, all of this is continually reset based on experience, based on new data, and based on pivoting to new ideas or plans. And we stay, again, in the cycles of it all based on the growing information and the growing expectations and the growing experiences that we have. And as parents and as business owners and as entrepreneurs, the more we can say, all right, here's the vision, here's the idea, let's go figure it out, let's go see what happens, the more resilient we can be along the way. With that, we bring you our fifth core value of the startup pregnant philosophy, the paradox, that We can make plans, and plans are important, but things often and rarely go according to plan. Thanks so much for listening in. As always, share your reflections on the blog over at startuppregnant.com. And while you're at it, 
hit subscribe on iTunes or leave us a review and tell us what you thought. We'll be doing one each of these 10 minute episodes over the course of 10 days, our 10 by 10 of the core values of the startup pregnant philosophy. If you want to go back and listen to the first four and you haven't listened to them yet, just go back in your podcast browser, wherever you listen to podcasts. And then As you're listening along, we have reflection questions for you for each episode. So today, I invite you to ask yourself, when in your life have you had something not go according to plan? And what happened instead? With this question, go leave a comment on our blogs, and then we will see you on the next episode. Thanks so much for joining us.